Hola, yo soy Trino Treviño, Trino Treviño y les doy la bienvenida al Club Tesoro. Listo. Hello, how are you? Hi, Hi good. all good. Are you in Italy right now? Yes, Sicily. Ah, it's awesome. It's very sunny, it's beautiful. One of the best periods. Yeah, I mean, today I'm here in, based in Mexico City and today the weather is still nice. I mean, it's been a bit rare because, I mean, global warming, of course, is affecting everything. So, I mean, yeah. Mexico City is not so cold, but last week we were very cold and today it's very sunny, wow. bright. So, yeah, I think very similar to <laughs> how you are living it right now in Italy. So, thank you very much for that time. Uh, my name is Trino. I'm a music journalist and DJ here in Mexico City. And, of course, I... Uh, represent and speak for a lot of the community here in Latin America. So I'm very happy to speak with you today. And Sorry. well, Sorry, uh, just to introduce you, uh, Jolie and Asia, you are a multi-instrumentalist. You sing, you perform, you do DJ, you do everything. No, So why don't you uh, present yourselves for that 2% of people that probably don't know you yet because you're now super famous in YouTube, in Spotify, etc. Uh, yeah, I mean, we are a I'm duo the best. <laughs> and we are a couple also. And we are, as you said, musician. Our music is kind of a mix between indie electronic, house, underground. 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 Yeah. Uh, I play a lot of instruments. Uh, I play piano since when I was eight. And then I started piano, drums and started DJ when I was kind of. 18, 19 years old. Yeah, we're very polyedric in the music industry. We love to like blend all the genres we like, all the inspirations we have. So it's good for us to express uh, all of them producing by ourselves as well. Because we can put in the, in the music we want all the influences. So it's good for us to be so polyedric so we can like express at our best So from what I'm I'm hearing, you started in music very young. So how, what was this that uh, you saw in music that you knew you were gonna be living through music? Because I mean, uh, probably it it could just stay as a hobby, no? But you took it to another level, of course. Yeah, it was kind of a funny. It's a funny story because I started playing piano when I was eight, and then I stopped at twelve because I was like, yeah, I like it, but the like the teacher that I had they were kind of boring so uh, at the beginning I was very interested in the piano itself but what I had to do was just like studying uh, some boring stuff so I at 12 years old I stopped and then my interest came back again when I was 14 and my father um, bought me like a small keyboard instead of the piano so I could play and put my headphones on And I started to spend time alone, alone, alone playing the piano. Uh, then uh, around 15, 16, I started playing a band, a local band. So I started working with music very early because from 14, 16 year old, I already was playing in some local bars, some restaurants as a keyboardist in a band and then as a guitarist in a band. Mm -hmm. Then at 18 years old, I was in a beach club in my hometown called Milazzo. And every Sunday, there was this DJ and percussionist that were, they were doing Afro House with like percussion. And I was like, wow, I love this. <laughs> I want going. to do this. I want to play this. And, who was and, it? Know. Sorry to interrupt. But who was this DJ that you... No, it was like a normal... It's a local. It's a normal, ah, okay, like, okay. A local DJ in, in my hometown that was doing every Sunday this uh, set of Afro House, Deep House with live percussion. Okay. And the percussionist was very good. And we were having so fun that I said, I really love it. And I, at 18 years old, I started to play the, the, the drums with a DJ, without DJing, just like the drums. And when we met, mm -hmm. one of my videos became viral of playing the drums. So I had to learn how to DJ yeah. very fast because I was going to tour without knowing how to DJ. And it was yeah. the early beginning. Yeah. Yeah. Well Well, for me, it was a little bit different, the music, because I was like born in a small town of a thousand inhabitants. And it was like so even hard to even think about to live about music. So when we started like together, it was there the moment when I maybe realized that music could have been like the uh, 
the work I was like dreaming for and and mm -hmm. and, live, and live with. Right, and also I mean the history of dance music in Italy is very interesting because uh, in in your country there are a lot of dance legends from the Euro dance scene and then of course of the underground scene as well like in in Milan in Torino like techno music and I all of that stuff very industrial yeah, yeah so I mean right now a lot of Italian DJs of course are very well known because of the techno and also of the dance yeah, tracks etc Medusa as well like yeah, yeah a lot of artists like Cabriati, yeah, exactly. a lot of them. Yeah. yeah, and those guys, and of course, like the dance legends, no, like Mauro Picotto, Gigi D'Agostino, all of those guys that yeah, yeah, yeah. represent like yeah, yeah. A, a very, a very cool spectrum. And I mean, I am saying this because the music that you produce is very fresh and very different from what the Italian dancing is is known yeah. as, no, because you, of course, include a lot of the instruments of your music expertise on the music and of course on the, your DJ sets. I mean, it's not very common to go and see a DJ perform and have drums on, on the stage. No, I mean, I think that right now a lot of them are trying to include more instruments on, on the stage, but for you it's very natural. No. So how do you feel with the setup that you right now are including in your sessions? Uh, we always knew we wanted to arrive to this point. Of mm -hmm. course, it took some time for us to grow and to understand how to include the piano, how to include the drums. But it was, as you said, it was very natural. Like, it's something that we wanted to do, firstly, for ourselves, to be 100%. Our sound. Yeah, our sound and also what we wanted to be on stage. Like, on stage... I have way more fun playing the drums instead of just being on the console. So it's something that grow, grow. It's a it was a, like a slow growth. At it the beginning, process, it was yeah. just me playing a small pad. Then it right. became us together. She was singing. Yeah, of course, it's not that easy always to bring all the instrumentation in clubs. For example, that's why we have two kinds of shows. That one is like <laughs> we call it hybrid, but it's always live. And he has a small drum pad plus the the keyboard piano. It's not a piano; it's just it's just a keyboard, keyboard. and live uh, live vocals as well. And it's more of a DJ set plus all our our music. While the live shows is just our music, and it's like with all full instrumentation plus uh yeah, you lights, can really... the piano and the big yeah. drum kit. So it, it's different. It's two kind of shows, but especially because it depends on the venue we play. If it's a club, if it's a festival, or if it's a, a normal venue, right? And also, I mean, I think that it, there are a lot of challenges when trying to perform uh, with the vocals in a nightclub or in festivals because, of course, the the other DJ is not prepared with the setup that you guys are working with. So, of course, trying yeah, to um, yeah, to mix the voice on, on on live, yeah. Yeah, it, it depends mostly like in the, the technicians in the booth where the monitors are the speakers uh but usually we never have this kind of problem mm -hmm. because we speak with the technician we present them our tech rider so we find always solution like we have been in very small clubs we've been in big festivals and we always find a balance yeah. Uh, between what we need and the quality of the of the show yeah we always meet like incredible people uh, working as technicians that they are really able to make the vocals work in the small situation as well yeah of course right. like they also want to help us because mm -hmm. uh, like our goal is the benefit of the yeah the, yeah the show yeah you if know? you find For a sure. good balance maybe yeah. with in years or like yeah like turning around the speakers in another direction there are some really show good. where we where we have um a uh, tour manager that is also a production manager that knows maybe how to uh, set every monitor or like where we should use mm -hmm. just the in-ears because maybe monitor could cause feedback but in general we we don't have this kind of mm -hmm. problem yeah especially sometimes because we have the hand pan oh yeah uh, the hand pan the, is more than the vocal yeah the analog one so it, mm -hmm. it's not electronic if we want to even if you wanted to bring the electronic one, but you have to microphoneize it. So you have to put all the the right direction of the microphone to have the perfect sound and not to be so much a reverb or feedback in the when you listen to it. So right. yeah, it, it depends. But of course we like have our uh, we always made it work. 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, I I was trying to to think. Uh, do you remember when was the first time that you performed live with all this setup? And 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 the second question we did is, was it did it run okay or did you have like a lot of difficult technicalities on that first try? Bogota, the first no, one. No, 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 no. With the big drums, it was New York. US, oh yeah, US. yeah, yeah. Right. No, it was. Of course, the venue was incredible and the technicians as well. So okay. we didn't have so many difficulties because it's uh, really easy once you fix the setup and you do uh, all the loading perfectly, it's it's easy. But yeah, yeah I think it was because, in New York. Yeah, because in America, there is not a difference between a DJ show and a band show. Like also the DJ is shows called hard tickets shows where you play in kind of like a small theater. So U.S. is more prepared on this mm -hmm. kind of show that we present. Right. While in Europe, usually we we try to have the same kind of show, but in clubs. But I mean, we we try we adapt ourselves because we come from even if I was playing piano since when I was small, our career started as DJ first. So yeah. we can adapt easily to any kind of show, mm -hmm. and our range of music can be. Uh, as she said, also polyadric, we can do more techno, we can do more upper house. It depends on the country, on the location, yeah. on the time of the set. We started more... like uh, adding few elements at a uh, at, at time because the first one was the drum pad, small electronic drum pad, very easy to plug in in the mixer. Mm -hmm. Then we started bringing the end pan that was more uh, problematic with microphones and everything. Then we uh, as the well the keyboard and the vocals so step by step we like understood yeah, how but it was also everything is very smooth like in 2019 we started and then pieces by pieces at the end of the 2019 it was already similar to to how it is now mm -hmm. while now we are trying to do something a little bit like the next level where we have also light designing and production More production so it can be also a beautiful show to see um and not just like to listen to, but mm -hmm. also like the whole image of the show yeah. seen another level. The vision we wanted to bring yeah. it more complete and more professional. Yeah. I mean, that's very cool because uh, what you are saying right now is that every show you create is very unique in, in its own way. Because, I mean, you said something very cool that is you also take, in account, take into account the time when you are performing the sunset or whatever. So that's something that not a lot of musicians or djs do when they perform live a lot of them just go there and play their set no matter which time of the day it is etc and i mean you uh, no, taking yeah. into consideration all of those elements uh, it's super yeah. cool that you, yeah, you're for doing example, that it happened even if it's a festival uh and we know we have to do our live show with a big a drum and the piano it happens, for example, when we prepare a set list and we know we, we are going to play that set list, but during the show, we change it. So that's it's the, the most thing of the, of the live show that you can change it depending on, on the crowd. And of course, like you still play your tracks and uh, our our music and as it is, but maybe you change the order or you just change the other song you want to put in. Yeah, like, but, so... but again, like, when we do sunset, we usually do more upper house mm -hmm. because we like to create a kind of vibe where you are enjoying, but not like too hard. It's just mm -hmm. like funny and you, you want to have fun in a cool way. While when we play like set from 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. it happened, we of course need to go a little yeah. bit like we always are up more to, powerful to the variant situation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The good thing is that our self in the first place like we like to listen and to play a lot of kind of music so mm -hmm. like there's some songs from Adam Bayer that we like and then there's some song from maybe Black Coffee then but that kind of upper house style so mm -hmm. the range is very big yeah 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 and speaking about music uh, this year you presented a uh, your last album well the your most recent album called Fire Hell and Holy Water which is such a uh, a very impact, uh, impactful title. But the interesting thing for me also is that this album is done in a way that it needs to be listened from the first track to the last track, no? I mean, it's not like a track that you need to put it in shuffle. So, yeah, yeah exactly. can can you speak about this album in particular? 
Yeah, we like, like as you said, you have to listen to it from the first track to the to the last one because we like to sing to our album like it's a journey, and starting with some emotional cinematic parts where you go to the first song that goes deep with the meaning meaning of life it's called and goes through more uh, of a dancey part like in the middle to go to the ending that is also cinematic emotional like it's a sun sun sunrise and sunset uh especially like a journey like your daily routine or whatever you wanted to the moment you wanted to listen to it so yeah it's something that it really has a, a beginning and a ending because that was the meaning we wanted yeah, to we, give. Yeah, we didn't want album. to do a playlist of songs mm -hmm. where each one is like a monolith. We wanted to do something that was more like a a complete story divided mm -hmm. in chapters. And every song is talking about like the same concept, but in a different way and a different perspective. But at the end of the day, as she said, it's like the whole album is a day and you start with the sunrise and you close with the sunset. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because when we were in Iceland, we recorded the, the first song during sunrise and the last song during sunset. Oh, so it would cool. be nice. We are going to share a documentary in which we talk about every aspect of the album, the concept behind it, how we produced it, so etc. Moments as and moments well. And it will be, yeah, there will be some shots from Iceland inside of it as well. And yeah, it would be like a big one. And the location yeah. where... Amazing. This is going to be available soon, this documentary? Uh, not yet. We... I think we will wait yeah. because we want to in put inside of it also some live show. So like, for okay. example, there will be some behind the scene where we are in the studio producing a song and then the clip after is us playing the same song, for example, in Latin America. The reaction of mm -hmm. the public at the same song that a couple of months before we were just producing in the studio. So we, we have to um go in all these countries and take videos of all these shows mm -hmm. and put them in the documentary as well yeah it's on the making yeah that, that sounds very cool we're running out of time so i just want to say thank you once again for having me jolie and asia and of course to invite a lot of the people to listen to your album if they haven't done it yet or see one of your amazing performances that are available on youtube which they can see you always recording some amazing locations around the world so thank you very much and just uh, to end this up i don't know if, if you guys want to say something to your latin american fans yeah sure we will be there next year in 2023 we truly can wait to to meet you finally and dance together and really thank you so much everyone from latin america for the, support the amazing you support you and listen to our yeah. music yeah awesome you thank you very thank much you and see you soon thank, thank you so much for the support <laughs> bye, -bye. Thank you. Esto es un episodio más de El Club Tesoro. Mi nombre es Trino Treviño y les agradezco una vez más a todos ustedes que nos escuchan en todas partes del mundo. Recuerden compartir el podcast si es que les gustó para que se puedan suscribir más de sus amigos y podamos comentar mucho más sobre estos temas. Yo estoy en las redes sociales como arroba Trino DJ, así me encuentran como Trino DJ en Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube y SoundCloud. Así como también pueden visitar mi sitio web que es www.trinodj.com donde cada semana estoy subiendo artículos relacionados al mundo de la música, así como entrevistas y también los programas de radio donde cada semana estreno mucha música. Una vez más les agradezco, espero puedan comentar este podcast con todos sus amigos y me dará mucho gusto saber de ustedes en las redes sociales. Nos escuchamos el siguiente episodio, hasta pronto.